Stormy Daniels back in the news. Yeah, real flashback here. As Donald Trump ramps up his latest run for the White House, he's now facing another legal challenge. A grand jury has been convened in the case of hush money payments made to adult film star Stormy Daniels by Trump back in 2016. That is according to two sources familiar with the situation confirming the development to NBC News, first reported by the New York Times. The Times reports Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg started presenting evidence to a grand jury yesterday, centering on a $130,000 payment to Daniels, a spokeswoman for the Manhattan DA and an attorney for the former president, both declined comment to us on this matter. Former Trump attorney Michael Cohen, you'll remember, went to federal prison for his role in the hush money payments. He says he met with prosecutors in recent weeks and may be asked to appear before the grand jury. Donald will ultimately be held accountable for this Stormy Daniel payment. This investigation that was to be brought by Alvin Bragg's office, previously Cy Vance Jr., is the most detrimental to him, his freedom, his livelihood, his business, etc., because it's the easiest to prove. The checks are the checks. We know a lot. There's recordings. The first three-month payment was made by Donald Trump, and I gave those to the House Oversight Committee who posted them and so on. And so he's not in the same position where he can deny or lie the way that he will in some of the other matters. Former President Trump issued a statement on his social media platform yesterday responding to the reports of a grand jury calling it the continuation of a witch hunt against him. Trump hmm. has denied having an affair with Daniels, but he acknowledged he repaid Cohen the coincidental sum of $130,000. Let's bring in lecturer in law at Columbia Law School, Caroline Polisi. She's a federal criminal defense attorney. Caroline, good to see you this morning. So um, it should be pointed out that Michael Cohen, perhaps not the best character at the center of your case. I'll let you correct me if I'm wrong there. He's convicted um, in this matter as well. Um, but what is the legal exposure at this point for Donald Trump? And are you surprised that that Bragg came to this point of a grand jury after seeming to have walked away from it not so long ago. That, that's exactly that right. I think everybody's asking the question, why now? As you noted, we're talking about conduct that occurred in 2016, 2017. Michael Cohen has already pleaded guilty yeah. to, to, to crimes of um, that conduct, served his prison time. Um, Cy Vance, the, the, the former Manhattan, Manhattan District Attorney before Alvin Bragg, had opened a sprawling investigation, including these hush money payments, um, as well as some other financial crimes. And when Alvin Bragg took over, two of his top prosecutors actually resigned, one of whom, right. Mark Pomerantz, is coming out with a book next week about that. But they resigned because they felt like Bragg did not have the appetite to move forward. He had abandoned his uh, you know, desire to prosecute Trump on an individual basis. Fast forward, Bragg now has two wins under his belt against Trump or criminal, criminal wins against Trump org and Alan Weisselberg, former CFO of Trump org. Maybe he has some more wind in his sails. Um, you know, this case has been referred to as the zombie theory mm -hmm. kicking around the Manhattan District Attorney's Office because it just won't die. Um, but apparently uh, it's been resurrected. It's coming back to life. So take us inside one of your entry level law classes and just explain what it means that this has moved to a grand jury phase. How significant is that? Uh, I'd say it's pretty significant. You know, the old saying goes, you can indict a ham sandwich. Um, however, given the political implications of uh, this, in, this is likely a special grand jury seated. It's seated for longer than a regular grand jury um, in panel to uh, look at more complex financial crimes. I don't think RAG would uh, in panel such a jury and present all this evidence if he weren't going to indict and if he didn't feel like he could get a win. Mika? So, Carol Caroline, I'm just curious, have you ever seen, and maybe the answer is yes, have you ever seen an individual in history with so many different legal challenges weighing him down, um, whether it be to do with the finances of his own company, rape charges against him, the Georgia investigation, the big lie, uh, the two, the January 6th investigation, special, con I mean, this is... This is a pretty long list, so that's number one. I mean, how many legal challenges can one person face without drowning in them? And number two, well, this one seems like so far back in time, it seems smaller in scope. Could this lead to real consequences? 
That's right, Minka. And, you know, the, the question is, which one is going to stick? Heretofore, we thought maybe it was going to be the documents case. Well, that's now sort of been eviscerated. Oh, the documents. By, right. <laughs> right. Um, Fonnie Willis, of course, was a dark horse in the race. Um, this one looks like it's, it's sort of coming up. You're right that, you know, uh, Finance crimes of this nature are not sort of uh, the crime of the century. Falsification of documents mm -hmm. in New York is a low-level uh, offense. However, prosecutors can kick it up to a felony offense if they can show that the falsification of the records was done in the pursuit of violating a second New York state law, a second crime, and that law has really been untested. It's akin to what Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to on a federal level in a campaign finance law violation. So the misdocumentation and, um, you know, uh, giving a, a campaign contribution over the legal limit. So were that to happen, and we're obviously projecting a little bit here, but were there to be an indictment uh, and that charge be leveled at former President Trump, what sort of penalty could it be attached if we get a conviction? So if they can do both both charges and it's, and it's kicked up from a misdemeanor to a felony charge, it is punishable by up to four years in prison. It doesn't need prison time, but he could go to jail for up to four years.